Welcome to the final instalment of what has been a fascinating look back at just some of the esteemed figures from our parliamentary history. I'm Matthew Mason Cox, President of the New South Wales Legislative Council, and it's been my absolute pleasure over the course of this series to introduce you to the immortals of the council, the eight distinguished figures honoured with marble busts along our chamber walls. In each edition, we've been exploring just who these silent sentinels were in life. And today, we're wrapping up with Sir Francis Suffolk. Born in Bathurst in 1839, Sir Francis followed a family tradition when he entered the parliament in 1875. His father, William Suffolk, had joined the council just a few years after Sir Francis's birth and would go on to serve across both houses while his uncle was also a parliamentarian. Sir Francis's brother, William Jr., followed suit too, joining the parliament the same year as Sir Francis. Sir Francis and William Jr. must have developed a taste for the chamber at a young age. Indeed, at a banquet held by the council in honor of his 75th birthday, Sir Francis recalled how he and his brother had once been expelled from the chamber's public gallery as children. Apparently, they were laughing too loudly at a prank they planned to pull on one of the sitting members. When Sir Francis sat in the parliament for real, it was serious business. He spent nearly 43 years on Macquarie Street with 17 of those in the upper house. He held a number of ministries in his time and it was as Minister for Justice and Public Instruction in the Assembly that he introduced the Public Instruction Act to reform education. This laid the groundwork for the modern public school system in which education became free, secular and compulsory. In the council, Sir Francis became president in 1903 following the resignation of Sir John Lackey, who we met in our last Immortals video. He would go on to preside over the house for almost 12 years before he died in office. During this time, Sir Francis was known for his characteristically fair approach. On his passing, he was remembered in the chamber for giving fair play to all members and interests concerned when ruling on questions. Sir Francis is not only remembered for his work in Parliament either, he was a pastoralist and a pioneer with a lifelong passion for animal breeding. He established a prize-winning stud of Tasmanian Merinos and also created his own breed of coaching horse from an imported Cleveland Bay sire. In the same year he became President of the Council, Sir Francis became President of the New South Wales Sheep Breeders Association and in 1907 the Royal Agricultural Society as well. A true supporter of primary producers, he used his position to revitalise the Royal Show after the bubonic plague of 1900 saw attendances dwindling. In fact, the first grandstand at Moor Park was named after Sir Francis. The Suttor stand was later moved to the Homebush Showground, where it remains today ready to welcome new generations to the Royal Easter Show. Sir Francis's last public engagement was the opening of the 1915 Royal Show. He passed just four days later. As for his commemoration in the chamber, Sir Francis's legacy was honoured with a marble bust sculpted by American-born artist Nelson Illingworth. It was presented to the council by Sir Francis's son, Reginald, on behalf of the family shortly after his death. Of the bust, the Sydney Morning Herald reported, that reminds the observer of a man who carried his distinction of good looks and bearing into extreme old age. Sir Francis's bust was the last to be added to the chamber for quite some time. It was 107 years, in fact, before our eighth bust was installed to honour the council's first female president, the late Honourable Virginia Chadwick, who we got to know in our very first Immortals video. And with that, our Immortal series comes full circle. I hope you found our journey just as compelling as I have. 